Hello, story lover. If you have turned on this video, you can be sure that these will be the most meaningful minutes that you spend your day on, because Blink Recaps publishes a brand new story every single day. And today, I will tell you the secret of the royal family and what history is silent about. The story, and this all begins in the Christmas Eve of 1991 in Norfolk. Chef and his staff prepares for the big dinner. Meanwhile, the beautiful Lady Diana is hurrying up to dinner, but she finds herself lost. She's asking for help to strange people who are really surprised to see her there. By the way, Diana is not far from the house near a field where her childhood home was. She's looking to the old scarecrow in the area who's dressed in her father's gold clothes. Diana goes straight to the scarecrow and takes off his jacket. When Diana finally arrives at the dinner, she greets her sons William and Harry. She's happy to see them and spend some time with them before joining the dinner. Diana puts on a beautiful pearl necklace, but she's so sad. She remembers very well about the affair of her husband Charles and another woman Camilla. Charles gave the same necklace to Camilla, and Diana wants to give the necklace back away, but maids don't want to take it. Maggie, the royal dresser, comes in, and Diana tells her she doesn't like the dress that she has been picked out for dinner. Maggie is not only a royal dresser, but also a friend and a trust person for Diana. Diana sits for the dinner where Charles and Queen Elizabeth are. She starts to imagine herself ripping off the necklace with all the pearls dropping into the soup, Diana continuing to eat the soup with the pearls inside. But it is just a simple imagination. She eventually runs to the bathroom and makes herself vomit. Later in the night, Diana sneaks into the kitchen for some treats. Mayor Gregory finds her and notes that someone observed Diana dressing by her window with curtains open. He takes notes to that, and it could be photographers. Diana is annoyed by his comments. Afterwards, she continues to walk around her old home, but she's catched by the guards, who escort her back to the house safely. At home, she wakes up her sons William and Harry to play a game with them. Boys say that the ideal Christmas would be Christmas without any royal rules. On the Christmas morning, Diana finds that the new dresser has been assigned to her. She's slowly getting upset because Mayor Gregory sent Maggie back to London. Diana feels more comfortable with Maggie and tells the new dresser that she prefers to only see Maggie. Till that, she will choose the dresser herself and later on joins the family for breakfast. Child makes nasty remarks about Diana purging her food that drives Diana crazy. Diana joins the royal family at Mary Magdalene Church, where she spots Camilla being there. Diana tries to keep calm and survives very much internally. All around is full of photographers. She becomes very uncomfortable with all of them snapping photos of her. Diana reads more of Ayn Bully's book and continues to see Ayn's ghost hunting her. After a short little nap, she hears Charles and other men firing rifles. She speaks to him about his wanting to bring William and Harry to the pheasant hunting. Diana is against pheasant hunting, and William and Harry doesn't like this royal attraction. Charles instead criticizes her behavior, and of course, bringing up the incident with the open curtains. Charles tells her that she needs to have two sides of her, the real one and the one that is present of the royal family and the public. Charles admits that he arranged for Maggie to get sent back to London, and Diana feels hopeless. Afterwards, the family gathers to watch Elizabeth's Christmas speech. After the viewing, Diana meets Elizabeth in the garden and admits that she really, really liked the Queen's dress that she gave the speech in. The Queen says that her dresser suggested, in fact, wearing another one. Diana later expresses her feelings about going to McGrady and then asks him for pliers. Before dinner, she sits outside of the grounds of the estate and talks to the pheasant, warning of its fate tomorrow. Mayor Gregory finds Diana and sits next to her to talk to her. He talks about how he and others have sworn their lives to the crown, with several dying for Diana and the other royals. Diana says that she has never wanted anyone to ever die for her. Everything is getting ready for the evening's Christmas dinner. 
Diana goes to her room and finds that the curtains have been sued to avoid attention from the unwelcome photographers. She cuts it open with pliers. She also believes that Maggie has to come back, but it's just another servant. Eventually, Diana starts walking out of the house, seeing Ayn Bullen's ghost following her until she sees herself dressed as Ayn. Diana walks back to her old house. She walks through the darkened halls of her old home and comes across her childhood bedroom. Diana sits down and cries as she thinks about the happier memories. And then she sees Ayn's ghost again. The ghost speaks to Diana and tells her that she torn her own necklace off and Diana should do the same with the pearls. It could be a proof of her independence. When Diana wakes up on Boxing Day, she meets Maggie. She's finally back. They're both going to retreat to the beach and spend a lovely time together. Diana speaks to Maggie about her personal struggles with her marriage and her mental state. Maggie tells Diana that she's in fact in love with her. She still reassures Diana that what she really needs is in fact love in her life. Everybody's preparing for the pheasant hunting. Diana drives towards the grounds where the men are participating in the pheasant hunt. She walks towards the men and their rifles and tries to scare the pheasants away, so they fly away. She calls out to William and Harry and tells Charles that she will be taking them away. Charles is dissatisfied, but agrees to let them go away with her. Diana says goodbye to Chef McGrady and Maggie before driving away. Diana takes the boys to KFC and uses her surname, not a royal name for the order. They all enjoy the afternoon by the River Thames and feel independent and finally happy. I hope you enjoy this story and the powerful message that it holds of how you should always take care of your own happiness and obviously mental health. Thank you for watching and have a lovely day. Anyways, have a nice day. Bye-bye.